Hey everybody, it's Ia Patsy, and I am here to continue our series on uh, feeling, healing <laughs> the inner feminine energy. So, um, today we are going to be working with those of us who have Gemini, all right, um, in our placements. Sun, Moon, Venus, North Node, somewhere, Gemini placements. So, when we're doing our work, our shadow work, or just in life, we have been focusing a lot on our masculine energies and how to heal the masculine energy. <clears throat> and for some people, for some of us, the masculine energy is so dominant and yet we are we identify as female or a woman. I'm not, I, I'm, I'm, this is not to exclude anyone. If you're on this page, you know, I don't have any problems with LBGTQ, whatever alphabet, do your thing. You have a choice. I make my choices. You make your choices. We all live with the choices that we make. It isn't anything. So, but. I'm going to be saying him and her and he and she and we right now it doesn't matter because we all have we all possess within ourselves both the masculine and feminine energies so what we're trying to do is balance that energy so no matter what you identify with as you still need to be whole right so we are going to work today with my nails that need to be done <laughs> and um just excuse my nails and we are going to work for Gemini all right so if I feel a little if I sound a little scattered I just got off the phone with my mother <laughs> and uh, that was a session a, les a lesson for her though because she told me at the end that she got it so I'm gonna I'm gonna go with that but it you know I told her as long as this there's, there's breath there's hope <laughs> So, you know, it's just, I love her. I love her. And uh, I w I'm trying to heal myself. And I guess uh, she's a safe place to work it out, maybe. And at the same time, address some things, just like I would any client. Uh, but it's her <laughs> so it's not as easy as it is with others but at the end of the day my mother is has done a wonderful job and she has raised wonderful children and she's been a good good mother and a good role model but nobody's perfect and you know she's an Aries so her imperfections are big <laughs> But she has created stability for herself and for us and safety. And that's all she cares about. All that lovey-dovey, you know, mushy stuff, she's not with it. But that's something that we talk about, right? And she's just not, not her way, you know. And she's a narcissist, so, you know. But she said she got it. When I finally got, I was saying something finally, and she got it. So she's and she's promised to do some homework. <laughs> That's how I'm talking to my mother, you know. She promised to do some homework. So and she said when she is by herself, which she's always by herself. Of course, she had to say that, but she's not by herself, by herself because my nephew's there. But that's another story. She said she was going to, you know, contemplate it. And I told her, I said you don't have to agree with it, but just be open to the fact that other people may feel like that. Other people live like that. Other people, you know, it's not foreign. It's not like an alien idea. There are people out there that are open and that have relationships and, you know, that kind of stuff. So she said she got it, so we'll see. 
And she didn't say it like she was blowing me off. She, she, I was in the middle of something. I said so. She said, okay, okay, all right, I get it now. I understand. So it was like that. So it was private conversation, but I guess I needed to put it here on 5:11 when I said that. So maybe I needed to memorialize it somehow. Anyway, <clears throat> we're working with the inner child tarot by um, Mark Lerner and. And you should learn her. And I've done some work um, with these cards at the beginning of my channel. So that I've been maybe back in 200, 2017. Why did I say 200? 2017. So if you might want to take a look at the Gemini reading for then, it may be re relevant for now. So right now I'm not going to actually do a reading per se, but we're going to talk about the inner child which in this deck is represented by Hansel and Gretel, right? So Hansel and Gretel are brother and sister. In some stories, they're twins, but um, most stories are just their siblings. And usually Gretel is the elder of the siblings, right? This is a story, remember, these fairy tales were not written specifically for children. They have been adapted for children over years, but originally when these stories, all of them were written, it was entertainment for adults, okay? So there is some adult themes in the story. Now, story of Hansel and Gretel. Hansel and Gretel were left in the woods by their father. In some stories it says it was their stepfather, in some stories it's their stepmother, in some stories it's their mother. But somehow or another they get led away from home, the two of them, because their parents uh, can't afford to feed them anymore. Uh, so they're left on their own. And they're little children. Uh, maybe six, seven, eight. You know, small. So Gretel and Hansel go on their way and Gretel was smart enough to take breadcrumbs because she knew that her mother or whoever was up to something and I believe the story says she was dropping breadcrumbs behind them so that they could find their way home because I think that it was the story was that she had tried it one time and the kids came back home because of the um, they she had, Gretel had found a way to mark the, the, the path. And uh, the second time, she had to use breadcrumbs. And the birds came and ate the breadcrumbs. So they couldn't find their way back. I, can't, I think that was it. The first time they went, she had pebbles that she dropped so that she could find her way back home. The second time they did it, the first time was uh, pebbles. The second time they did it, I think the all they had was bread, and the birds ate it. So they were lost. But there was a house that they came upon that was made out of gingerbread and cookies and all kinds of things that would be attractive to children. And uh, they went towards the house to nibble on it. And uh, lo and behold, the house belonged to a witch. And she invited them in and uh, eventually tricked them, and she was going to eat them. So she had Gretel doing housework for her, and she had Hansel in a cage, and she was feeding him because she wanted him to be fat when she put him in the oven. And... Uh, so Gretel was in charge of the feedings and Gretel got a bone or something because the witch didn't have good eyesight and when she would go to um, ask Hansel for his hand or his finger so she could see whether or not he was growing or getting fatter he never got any fatter because it was a bone that she was that, that Gretel had fixed so that when she went to feel if he was uh, plump enough she thought that he wasn't getting plump enough, but he was because Gretel was feeding him, but she knew what the witch was doing. So again, Gretel was basically the leader. Gretel was the she was very intuitive 
and she used her smarts to save herself and her brother. Because at the end, when the witch decided that she wasn't waiting on Hansel anymore to get any fatter, she turned on the oven and she was going to put him in there. And instead, Gretel was able to push her into the oven and she was gone. So the children had a house, the witch was dead, and all was well, right? So that's how that story goes basically for those of you who aren't familiar with Hansel and Gretel but I'm sure most of us are so <coughs> Hansel and Gretel are the number six in the regular tarot the number six is the lovers right number six lovers and the lovers talks about beauty the start of a romance temptations attraction sexuality lust and love and talking about in order for a relationship to work you have to leave your parents it represents a period of good times close friendships and adventures also talks about making important decisions so that's the basic right away lovers definition and in reverse because we're talking about our the hurts that we have experienced as as children so this is going to be about that. So I'm going to be bringing, talking about the cards that I picked that are all sixes and see if we, any of these situations or anything that I say resonates with something that may have been important to you in your childhood and maybe that's the part that we need to identify so that you can at least give it honor and reassurance to the little girl inside of you that maybe wasn't acknowledged the hurt about these different situations so that goes into for all the readings but for right now let's get back to Gemini so um talks about a divorce uh, temptation uh, lapse in morals inability to make a decision bad choices Friends who move on and abandon you, fighting and communication breakdown that leads to infidelities and separation. It's possible divorce. So, for some of you, Geminis, maybe your feminine energy experienced abandonment, separation. Maybe you were enforced to care away from your, your parents somebody some of you maybe may um, maybe you were adopted out and then makes you feel a certain way about love right you may be looking for love in all the wrong places as they say or maybe you don't feel that you are a good judge of a relationship you know you maybe you don't even know how to have a healthy relationship because maybe you might have step parent all right there may have been an absent parent and this six in the Casanova deck is the lovers also and that talks about a secret love affair that is right and it is destined but it is clandestine it is quiet it is secret no one knows about it but there's lots of passion and lots of love and friendship right there's someone who is who may have been keeping secrets about a relationship as a child maybe you became aware of it it doesn't have to be a love relationship some of you maybe you found out that you had a, a different parent than your siblings that could be something that would affect you giving you feelings of abandonment maybe your parents divorced and you had to make a choice of parents to live with and maybe one parent felt abandoned by the children right 
as a result of the divorce or separation for somebody. So sixes are about healing. Six is about love. Love, number six from the numerology deck, and healing, 66 from the numerology deck. Number six, moving on, like in the Six of Swords. So, moving on, memories of love, Six of Cups. victory and success and harmony stability and harmony victory so this is like the six of wands I guess and this would be the six of earth so this would be um, pentacles like. So stability, harmony, memories. So maybe you're moving on and you're healing or you want to heal because you want to have a successful love relationship now and move on from the secrets the secrets of the past, the abandonment, feeling left out. Maybe for some of you, you had to be responsible for a sibling. That's for some of you. And you maybe you didn't get that back. You, that didn't reciprocate. For somebody, maybe you lost a sibling as a child. And you felt responsible for that. Even though it had nothing to do with you. It wasn't your fault. Right. Maybe somehow, some way, you fail that. I don't know. Somebody for someone. Maybe you lost a sibling, and you felt that it was something that you could have avoided because you maybe you were supposed to be in charge and. you were playing because you're a child mm. and maybe something happened to someone and you felt guilty because you were given a responsibility for a, a, a younger sibling mm. but that's not your fault right because you shouldn't have been in charge of the younger sibling to begin with because that's their parents but you may have been walking around with that guilt for somebody and it's time to move on from that right even if it is a memory that you can't walk that you feel that you can't shake it's time for you to heal and claim a victory All right and balance yourself. Your masculine and feminine needs to be balanced. And that will help you move on from whatever this hurt was. Right? This memory. This vision that keeps haunting somebody. Yeah. This is an opportunity for prosperity material prosperity and spiritual prosperity so a blending of these energies is going to bring you into wholeness another six and getting the love that you want this is the uh, Lysias tarot getting the love that is meant for you no matter what the circumstances <clears throat> are it'll be brought to you you're going to move towards it 
Number six also represents the third eye chakra. So this is supposedly somewhere here between your eyebrows and your nose. Could be here, you know, different places. But anyway, this is one of your chakras that needs to be in balance. And you balance it by meditation, by taking walks and uh, sitting still, doing visualizations. I'm going to read exactly for the third eye chakra. <coughs> so, the color for the third eye chakra is indigo, which is blue. Um, the sound that it makes is... Um, so when you are meditating, that would be a sound that, if you choose to make those sounds, that's the sound that the third eye chakra responds to. Um, O-M. The element is light, right? Of course, enlightenment. When your third eye chakra is open, you see stuff. You see things that other people don't see yet. Not that they can't, but... If they're not in tune with their higher self, they're not going to see it. And maybe not as clearly as you, but the more you exercise it, the more you will strengthen it. And the uh, it's associated with the pituitary gland. And the key words for this chakra, the sixth chakra, is I see. So, you see. To balance it, you have to do breath work, yoga, tai chi, visualizations, and color therapy. Don't just focus on this one chakra, but it's important to remember to balance all of the chakras so that they work in harmony. All right? This is about clairvoyance, higher levels of consciousness. And it works with your throat and your crown chakra itself. The third eye chakra is important, Gemini. All right. And <clears throat> that third eye chakra is not going to only give you, hello, midnight, the opportunity to uh, see, you know, to be clairvoyant and clairaudient and all of that. It's also going to let you be able to see what happened. Maybe some of you have disassociated yourself or compartmentalized yourself from some of these experiences that made you feel abandoned or secrets around you about it could be it, it didn't even have to be other 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 um love relationships it could have just been like I say a, a ch outside child for some of you maybe some of you grew up in a household where your parent had a, a child outside like your father had a baby with somebody else and you ended up knowing about it all right and that may have affected you and the way you look at love all right um maybe you had to stand up for your self and your siblings because of a step parent some of you and maybe that's a memory that you have to move on from in order for you to be victorious in order for you to get the final victory over this person this evil person right the witch that may have been a step parent or even a real parent in your that person needs to be put into basura that person needs to go into the the oven you know you have to Purge that, you know, let that go. Heal from that because that may be what is blocking you from relationships, from bringing in a harmonious relationship because the, the effects that this dynamic in your family as a child or a young person or a young adult even, it may have affected you in a way. In the um, Barbieri Zodiac deck, the number six is actually Virgo. All right, so that's the Earth sign. Gemini is the Air sign. 
but this Virgo is what he associates the number six with so maybe some of you have Virgo in your chart and maybe some of you are dealing with a Virgo or maybe the parent or the step parent was a Virgo or one of your siblings may have been a Virgo but Virgo is about stability and beauty and paying attention to details right making sure everything is in order watching very watchful hmm. so for some of you maybe you are standoffish because of these events in the previous in your childhood in this life there could be some things from a past life but I'm I am I'm thinking that we're focusing on healing or at least acknowledging the pain and the hurt and the disappointment that um, our feminine inner child may have experienced because of the actions of others around them and just acknowledging it I think is healing not letting it have a voice because part of the feminine um, energy is learning about our voice and our power and standing up for ourselves, right? So, standing up for ourselves. Moving on from disharmony is going to bring you the victory. Moving on from whatever this past relationship, these memories may be affecting their ability to join with this person. Maybe this person is the one that hurt you. And maybe this is a... Uh, maybe you feel like this is a repeat of a cycle with this person. And maybe so... Maybe you want to push them away. And they're still coming towards you. Maybe something that you'll experience or maybe you have experienced in the past someone may have come towards you that you were trying to resist and you were able to do that and move on some of you is an encounter with a very negative energy because in the right away deck the devil which is also Capricorn represents Capricorn is uh, 15 and one in five is six so maybe you dealt with that type of energy could have been a Virgo or a Capricorn or someone maybe your earth sign which should be a Virgo Capricorn and Taurus mm. so this talks about a greedy materialistic selfish person disregard for others someone who tried to control you someone you may have caught in an unhealthy situation the card of sexual perversity and dark secrets sexual addictions overspending substance abuse compulsions judging people by their values no, judging people by their outside appearances, not by their values. So that's the kind of energy, the devil. So, maybe some of you had inappropriate um, sexual experiences, which could have been mol molestation, rape, or just entering into your sexuality too early. Could have been someone around you could have been a family member or parent also in the reverse this is someone who looks for easy make money schemes right has a weak character and they tend to be aggressive 
and violent, angry, manipulative, controlling, cruel, and sadistic. Mm. Once this person, or you, or whoever this was, this person is going would take time to improve whoever this is. If it's you, then it's time to do that work. If it's someone else outside of you, I think that you're aware that this person is set in their ways. Mm -hmm. Set in their ways. Maybe they passed away already. And uh, if that is the case, you can forgive them, which is for yourself to be free of them or her. Just forgive them for they know not what they did, right? Or even if they knew what they did, they didn't really know what they did because they didn't know who they were messing with, Gemini, right? Right. Because you're going to have the vic you have the victory. You're going to be able to do all of that. And maybe you are doing all of that. But maybe inside of you, that little girl still has a little bit of a barrier up because you're waiting for someone to drop the other shoe, right? You're waiting for someone to take your stability or move you out of your place mm -hmm. move, move you away from your stability trick you like the stepmother did right walking away not being able to get back to home because there's no breadcrumbs there's no path you don't know how to get back there some of you have a fear of some type of energy like that or you are doing your best to avoid that so you create stability and you hold on to your stability okay so this is about trust abandonment trust after abandonment okay learning how to heal healing after abandonment healing after betrayal healing after your trust has been broken by someone who is a broken person mm. healing after someone tried to break you a broken person may have tried to break you or may try to break you or did try to break you when you were a child they hurt you they tried to hurt you on purpose Some of them felt that they were doing something for your own good. Others of them knew that they were hurting you. For some of you, you, you may have had a parent or step-parent that may have set you up, put you in a situation, sold you for drugs or sex, sold you for drugs, made you have sex with someone, somebody, may have experienced that. Someone may have hmm, done some really um, hurtful things. <clears throat> so this is not negating the pain and the hurt at all. It's acknowledging it, actually. Acknowledging it and acknowledging that it was wrong. All right? But you are Gemini. So... Geminis are supposed to speak up, right? You're an air sign, and you have no, you shouldn't have a problem feeling free to speak up, even if it's not always the right thing to say, because the other side of Gemini is Sagittarius. Sagittarius will get to the point, right? Sagittarius knows and is going for what it is that they want. So, there could be a situation where there was a break of communication. Like I said, separation from a parent, sisters and brothers, something, someone important to you. But part of the lesson was learning about loving yourself first, being in harmony with yourself. And not expecting anything from others and not manipulating 
others. Right? Having a balanced, interdependent relationship, not a codependent relationship. But this talks about magnetism and magic that can come into your life. And, <coughs> of course, the twin flame journey is represented by the lovers where two souls are intertwined again it could be siblings right but it could be cousins yeah it could be blood relations right in some of you and that may explain some situations of incest um, spirit gave me that a few months ago that is those of you who have had that in your families and that could have been a secret that you, maybe you all were holding on to and not discussing because somebody may have had an incestuous situation in their family maybe your parents were related um, brothers and sisters cousins something like that and maybe no one talked about it and it's not outlandish because I've met people who have had that kind of situation, okay? So it happens. And maybe that is something that you need to, to heal from. Is not your fault, you know? If you were a child of that situation, it's not your fault. It was meant for you to get here. And that, the Spirit has given me that that was just the same way we have twin flames who have to be with each other because they have to be with each other sometimes it incarnates in different people and sometimes those people end up being in the same family and it's just it's the same magnetism it's two souls who are intertwined and the challenge of this particular lifetime or that particular lifetime was how you're going to do this and you're related so for some people you it, it, it resulted in um, those type of, type of dynamics where you, you have like a, a brother-in-law or sister-in-law who's just can't stand your boyfriends or your girlfriends you know always got something nasty to say that's sometimes that could be that kind of energy spirit has said that to me yes that um, those those sisters or brothers that you just something in you tells you that if they weren't brother and sisters she probably would be sleeping with him and that's why she's married to you and people may say those things out of anger but that comes after a long time sometimes of observing someone and sometimes you don't realize that you see more than you think right and that could be that energy and those people don't realize that but there's a, a, a there may be an obsession with someone that was forbidden an, an obsession that was forbidden but was destined and because we have free will we choose to come back into these situations and challenges to learn lessons so for somebody that may have happened. It may have been an incestuous relationship between siblings or cousins, something like that. That was an adult, you know, it wasn't like um, molestation or something. It's like two people who fell in love but found themselves at a situation because they're related. So, that may be something that you may want to um, acknowledge and know that heal from that if that is the case and the, you all were brought together if that was the case and those people in your family were brought together it was meant to be that way because in some situations you get cantankerousness you get arguments you get fighting because the people are trying to they, they, they there's something and they just don't know what it is and so they are trying to fight against it or it comes off as jealousy and damn sure is <laughs> from that sibling towards 
the new wife or the new husband or the girlfriend or something like that but it's real that's part of that twin flame energy but because of the way society's set up that's inappropriate but Cain and Abel got had wives where they get them from they must have been related to them now I feel just me that they were daughters of Lilith, which would have been Adam's first wife, his first spouse, um, because she was not trying to, she and Adam were created at the exact same time, and she and Adam were equal, they both had equal relationship with God, and she refused to submit to him because that was that was what she was told and she was like nah I'm not and she didn't want to have sex with him laying down because she felt that made her submissive so it was a thing it became a thing and she ended up being cast out of the Garden of Eden and then um, Adam became a lonely person and God gave him Eve right but Eve was younger than Adam he, she was made from his rib at a different time but Lilith was equal to Adam and because we are dealing with a patriarchal society and has been going on for generations and generations Lilith's story is left out of Genesis right she's been cast out cast aside but maybe that snake that comes and speaks to Eve was in a snake maybe it was Lilith telling her get a clue get some wisdom Lilith is that kind of uh, energy so and men would see that as a snake back in the day so maybe that's how that got written into the Holy Scriptures for those of you who are familiar with the King James Version of the Holy Scriptures it's a King James's version KJV King James was the king of England that wanted to get a divorce so he could remarry and the Church of England was not having it it was the Catholic Church I think at the time well, whatever the rules were he wasn't have they weren't having it so he commissioned them to rewrite a Bible so that he could justify his getting divorced and in the meantime they did a little other adjustments along the way so that's the version of the Bible that is standard and that all most other Bibles are based on different translations or whatever but that Genesis story is uh, it starts with in the beginning there was the word right God said let there be light in the darkness but Lilith <laughs> was God's first creation and why not she was the one that had the womb that was going to be bringing in the generation so you needed her. why wouldn't you make her first anyway or at least at the same time as the um, masculine energy so I was saying that the incest may have been daughters of Adam and Lilith that Cain and Seth married yeah and left after Cain killed Abel so maybe that's where and because they don't want to mention Lilith because she's a snake perhaps that's why we don't we don't know where these wives came from because God said be fruitful and multiply right so as, even though Lilith refused to submit to Adam perhaps it was a third party situation type of thing <clears throat> right Lilith could have been the devil depicted there between Adam and Eve 
possible. Hmm. Mm hmm. Could possibly be. But whatever it is, that's better than saying that they were having sex with their full sisters. So let's 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 uh <laughs> that they married their full sisters, maybe that's what it is. I don't know why we got on that. But that's that kind of energy, right? Of the the twins, the brother and the sister who looking out for each other very close, right? It's that type of energy which if it goes too far can be looked at or is incestuous. So some of you may have left dealt with that type of situation in your life, in your family, or maybe you are in an incestuous relationship now. Or maybe you had one and you have some shame regarding that. It's just part of the journey. No need to have shame. You can heal, right? Because it was about love. Or at least what you may have thought was love or whatever, but it was love, sincerely. Because this was someone that you got along with, someone that got you, someone that you understood. Because you all came from the same roots. So don't feel, don't let that stop you from healing. You don't have to be ashamed of it. Just acknowledge it. Acknowledge it. If it was if it was good, acknowledge it was good. If you can't say it out loud, then write it down. Right? Because you need to be prosperous in your life. Spiritually and materially. And you can be. There's a brighter future there for you. But there's lots of emotions that you might need to look at. And that's what's going to bring you the victory. When you move on from feeling the guilt, when you move on from feeling the need to hide this feeling, these emotions, or this experience. Maybe you've never told anyone about this experience. You know, you could have went away to visit your grandparents up in the farm somewhere years ago and you fell in love with one of your cousins. And every summer you would go there and you would see them and it was still love and, and, and it's something that you never spoke about. And maybe you all still see each other, but you don't do anything about it because you know, you're older now and things have got, you know, gotten on and done other things. And maybe there's some guilt for somebody there. It must be, okay. Maybe. And you haven't spoken about it and you've told no one about it and you don't talk about it to one another. But you know about it. You know that attraction is still there. Something that you may experience. May have experienced. But it's uh, not necessary for you to hold on to any guilt about that. That's what Spirit is saying. Let it go. Be in harmony with yourself. Accept the things that can't be changed. And see if there's anything good that you can garner from it. And a lesson that you can garner from that experience. For those of you who resonate with any of... Um, what's been said. So Gemini, this is an opportunity to heal, to embrace and acknowledge the love, even the loves that were forbidden. They were real. It was real. Mm -hmm. Even the loves that were forbidden, they did something. They were healing for you maybe even at the time. And maybe that's what needs to be acknowledged. No matter what the other circumstances was, maybe at the time it was healing. And maybe it's what was needed. So, don't feel any ways about it. Allow that to let go of it. Let go of it. Come on! Oh, it's locked. Sorry. <laughs> Oh, I don't even have the microphone plugged in. I hope everything was... I hope they heard me. 
Hi, sweetie. So, anyway. That's your reading, Gemini. I hope that it's helpful. It wasn't really a reading. It was more of a little talk. Um, but I wanted to do this for you. And I'm going to do everybody else, but I'm going to do it, in, you know, as Spirit tells me to do it. But speaking of twins, right, I went to this college, and they were, I realized this morning when I was, before I talked to my mother and while I was writing, that the um, nickname for the school was the Twin Colleges, right, the Twin Colleges, and we had a bar that was called the Twin Oaks. And uh, I think there's a commemorative uh, plaque now at the corner of the street that had the twin oak trees um, that signified the college. It was a coordinate college, they called it at the time. And that meant that we had two colleges on the same campus. One was for women, one was for men. And we went to classes together, um, but we had separate administrations. And they had just started allowing co-ed in the country at the time. Because usually, back in the day, in the early 70s, back, when you went to college, you stayed in your own dorm. All boys or all girls. There was none of that crossing over co-edness. Even though you went to a college with uh, the other sex, you didn't room in the same building with them even. There was none of that. All the floors were all boys, all floors were all girls. So it's starting to... At the time that I went to college, they were starting to uh, allow co-ed dwelling. So on that campus, which was Hobart and William Smith Colleges, <laughs> um, Hobart was a men's college, William Smith was a women's college, and uh, we went to classes together, but we had separate administrations, and we had separate student governments. So that was the difference. Radcliffe and Harvard are like that. We always hear about Harvard, but actually the school for women was Radcliffe. So everybody is just like people go to Hobart and William Smith, William Smith being the women's school, and everybody says, oh, I went to Hobart because of, again, patriarchy, masculine energy sports and the things that these schools and Harvard is like law school and you know everybody's so smart but you have women that were coming out of Harvard also but they actually were coming out of Radcliffe so they had I think Hobart William Smith and Radcliffe and Harvard may have been the only ones at the time that were actually two separate colleges but on the same campus and existing coexisting right interdependent of one another all right that didn't mean there wasn't love because there was <laughs> you know um there wasn't love i wouldn't have had my daughter but it was um separate but equal at the same time as much as it could be when you're dealing in a patriarchal society in the 70s but we were still waiting for the ERA, the Equal Rights Amendment. We've been waiting for that all this time, and we still haven't got it. Everybody else got rights except us. Anyway, I'm not going to go there. Whew, let's go on. So, Gemini, that is your healing. Hopefully, maybe that will help you heal. That little boy and that little girl inside that was lost, that wasn't listened to, Nobody came to look for. We had to find their way. And maybe you and your sibling, you and your brother and sister, twin or not, maybe that's though you the two you had to survive. Or the three or four or five or whatever. Maybe children having to survive while being abandoned by adults. Some of you felt that, some of you lived that. And they are telling you that. All of that went to make you a strong person who can see things from both sides of a situation, some of you. And do more meditation, exercise, work on your third eye, work on balancing all your chakras because you got something to say. You've lived something that 
needs to be acknowledged, if not anywhere else, but at least within yourself, and to not be ashamed of whatever it was. If something was, that you did something wrong, then own up to it. But don't carry the guilt of your, of your emotions, of your love. Don't feel guilty for loving anybody. Don't feel guilty for loving anyone. I'm not talking about anything that's violent or anything that's inappropriate, but something like I said, a family member or someone that was different. Don't be ashamed of the fact that you loved that person at some time. You did. And maybe you still do. And you may be keeping it quiet because it's inappropriate. Let that go. Make a decision to heal and to love and to be successful. And if you have to revisit that, then do that. But it's going to be healing for you, Gemini, or whoever's been drawn to watch this. So anyway, thank you so much for allowing me to bring you these messages, Gemini. I hope it was helpful. And I'll be talking to everyone real soon. Like I said, don't look for me to do these in any order. I'm just going to do it as I'm led. All right? And I hope it's helpful. Work on the other ones um, I did so far was Sagittarius, Capricorn, Scorpio, maybe Cancer. Capricorn, Sagittarius, Scorpio, maybe Cancer. And now. Gemini. So we're talking to y'all real soon. Peace and namaste. I love you guys.